Eh, buonasera, tra pochi minuti iniziamo, volevo soltanto ricordarvi che la prossima, il prossimo incontro sarà in inglese, quindi se qualcuno avesse bisogno di cuffiette si possono prendere nell'atrio. Io penso sto... Penso sto...
Aspettiamo ancora qualche minuto che tutti prendano le cuffie, che almeno chi ne ha bisogno, per la traduzione in inglese. Eh, ho il piacere di invitare un ospite importante per questo festival, è un festival dedicato alla scienza ma crediamo che la scienza abbia delle forti dosi e forti elementi di creatività perché bisogna avere un, una visione per guardare oltre diciamo, l'apparenza delle cose. L'ospite che abbiamo qui stasera lo fa attraverso il suo lavoro, la sua esperienza è un artista, un designer, un ex designer, si preferisce farsi chiamare, ha lavorato con grandissimi marchi, non solo legati al mondo del cibo, da Alessi fino a Danese, e soprattutto ha esposto in moltissime gallerie in tutto il mondo, dal MoMA di New York al Pompidou di, eh, di Parigi. Ho il piacere di chiamare sul palco Marti Guichet. Thank you. Allora, grazie. Um, I will turn into English. <laughs> ok, so... Um, I will try to explain you these 20 years. This year is 20 years I started to do this kind of food design practice. Um, I started in 1997, where design was completely academic, so in a way It's 20 years which changed a lot in, in food also. And uh, the presentation is based in relevant topics about uh, my work in food. Um, I have to say that uh, I think uh, food design is more design than related to food. Uh, it's about designing edible objects and uh, Um, also, I think uh, it's about proceeding with a project of design through the food process. Uh, this is a diagram I did uh, 10 years ago in 2007 um, about the whole exhibits and performances I did and uh, it started Uh, in the first exhibit and at, at the end of these 10 years I had three main points. One is design 2.0, one is this concept of ex-designer, but uh, curiously in the middle uh, it was this food design which at that time was completely new. This is a diagram uh, from Alfred Barr Jr. Uh, uh, that did for the MoMA in um, In, in the middle of last century, and I changed the whole uh, references with my own references. This uh, year, in February, I did an another exhibit uh, celebrating these 20 years on food design, and what I did is I reversed this diagram, and uh, um, I started with these three points, X-Designer, Food Design, and Design 
um, and ended with the exhibit uh, this February. And relevant is that the influence and influences that uh, I was taking in the 10 years before, these next 10 years, I influenced it through my work. These influences are um, the food design movement, the business, business utopia, the design pilgrimage, and digital lifestyle. Okay, so one of the relevant topics on food is these edible objects. Um, I, I, I believe, well, it's known that gastronomy is usually based in to please the senses. So gastronomy, the chefs, all the people uh, cooking are only interested in the senses. It has to taste good, it has to smell good, it has to uh, look good. Um, in my opinion, food design opens the food much more. It's about a project uh, related to ergonomics, politics, economics, and all the complexity that a product has to have today. The main point is that I started to design uh, food because I was very interested in mass production uh, in the 90s, and I um, I understood that food is mass produced, but it's really not uh, well done. So I, I tried to, th to look at food as an object. And if you look uh, at food as an object, you can design it the same as you design a lamp or a chair or another thing. So the first um, thing I designed it is this called Spam. It's the redesign of a Catalan a traditional snack that is similar to a bruschetta, which is a piece of bread with a tomato on the top and salt and oil. What happened is that at the, at the beginning of the 90s, we, um, it was a new lifestyle position, which was to, to, to eat in front of the computer because it was starting to be popular, the personal computers. So I, rea I realized that the traditional food was not really appropriate to eat in front of, of the computer because it was doing a lot of dirt in the keyboard. So what I did is I redesigned uh, this traditional snack. And what I did is I put the bread inside the toma tomato and the salt and oil. And I call it spam, which means spam to market, the phonetic for uh, is bread with tomato in Catalan, and it's a cross-reference. So that was this set that I did from Spam and Techno Tapas, which are snacks that you can eat uh, in a very radical situations of contemporary life. This is another project. It's, uh, it's called Sponsored Food. It's a food uh, it's a, this is an omelette with a sponsor, Calvin Klein. Um, for some people, the Paleolithic period is the golden age of humanity because there were groups of uh, humans going uh, through Europe completely free, taking uh, the food from the nature. So it means that uh, human and nature were equal. There were no agriculture, and uh, this is for some people this kind of uh, golden age. I tried to set up a kind of uh, sponsored food so that you could have um, nowadays sponsored food restaurants in, through Europe so that people could go through the whole uh, uh, Europe eating for free in uh, these sponsored food restaurants. That would mean that the um, consumer society is the, the new nature. These are all historical projects from 97. I have also to say that uh, I am working with food, uh, among other th things, but I have no idea of cooking. Um, I think it's not uh, important to know uh, the process of cooking um, to, to work with uh, food design. Um, 
This is, uh, it's called tapas pasta, and um, it's a way to cook the pasta that you can eat with your fingers, like, like uh, if they were tapas. Um, I will show you how it works. You put a, a spaghetti inside a penne rigate. Uh, when it's um, a little bit uh, soft, you can bend it, and you can put it into the water. Uh, when it's al dente, you can take it away. And you have a dish of pasta that you can take with your fingers. And then you can, that allows you to try different sauces um, uh, in w with one dish of pasta, or you, it allows you to share with other people a, a dish of pasta. This is another design. It's a, a hand-free lollipop. And this is, uh, again, a very curious project. I, I did, uh, um, at the beginning, in 97, the design of a glass uh, to, to drink um, apple schnapps, a glass that's made from an apple. So I, you, you, do, you do a hole, and then you can use it as a glass. You put the, sh the apple schnapps, you can drink, and then you can eat. And 2013, the, the Stahlemühle brand, which is a German company, asked me to produce the tool to make this glass. So my first design uh, uh, years ago was really only the apple with a hole, but actually the, the people or the companies, they ask for the tool to produce this um, apple glass. I am also very interested since the beginning in the objects that uh, uh, they have the um, function, but they don't have the, the body. So I like very much food because it's an object that disappears uh, because you eat and it's transformed into energy. That's also for me very interesting in food design. And of course you have uh, books published by the uh, Mantova publisher Corraini. Uh, this is a Transition Menu. It's a book about the end of gastronomy as a nutrition uh, way. And, um, um, and this is a second edition, also from Corraini, about the food designing, which compilates all the projects I did on food since the beginning. And uh, this is the second edition, which is updated till 2015. Okay, and another thing that happens to me is that, of course, when in 97 I started to present food, uh, it was not really uh, going into the production. So the first context where I accepted this kind of thinking in design and design applied to food were uh, art centers and lifestyle uh, context. That's why I, since then I did a lot of exhibits um, with these objects. This is in Barcelona in 2001. And this, for example, is uh, after 10 years in Singapore, all with these models of food, mostly are models of food. There's also some uh, exhibits which are related to food. For example, I believe that if you design a good uh, object, a good edible object, you don't need a fork or you don't need a spoon, you don't need a, a, a plate because if it's ergonomically well done, uh, the object you can handle with your hands. So food design is mostly uh, things that you eat with your hands. That's why the, the plate is a souvenir from, from the past. I did also different uh, kind of uh, exhibits. For example, this is a table in, w in which you can produce uh, met, it's hydromiele, uh, and it's inside a museum, and it's the use of the museum as a free, a free area. So an art museum allows you to produce alcohol without having any license or any uh, kind of paper. And this is a table to play producing 50 liters of hydromiele. And this is another uh, exhibit I did in, in the 
National Gallery of uh, Victoria in Melbourne, in which uh, children, it's a, a, an exhibit for children, children play with food without cooking. I like very much the idea to think on food or to play uh, with food, but without the idea of cooking. I think cooking is completely uh, um, irrelevant and old-fashioned. And um, um, it's also in the work relevant this idea of the performance. Um, um, it happens that in the first exhibit uh, I did in Barcelona, um, because it was uh, food objects, I didn't want to present the food because after one day you have to change it or you have to prepare. So what I did is I, pre I presented it through photography but uh, the gallerist told me that uh, nobody would uh, come to an exhibit of product design uh, when there are photography and there's not objects. So he said to me uh, to prepare some of these snacks. So I was in the exhibit and, and, and the gallery said, please do the spam, the tomato with a braid inside. Um, mm, because people will come and then they can see and they can try the spam. But as I don't like to, to do things with food, I, I was thinking to ask some friends to come and to prepare it uh, before the opening, some of these snacks. Um, so I, at, at, at the left was a Japanese friend, Daifuku, who was cutting the tomato with a special circular tool. Then um, Karl, a Swedish man, was emptying this tomato. And uh, um, Marius, a French, was putting the bread inside the tomato. Lucas, Italian, was put, putting oil and salt inside. And myself, I was doing the quality control at the end. We did uh, 500 of these pieces. We wanted to do it before the, the people are coming, but the gallerist says, no, the, please do it when the people is here. So that's why I became a kind of performer in a way. And that's why for a lot of people, food design, it's uh, presenting uh, or doing events with food. But I insist that's not food design, that's just an event on food. Uh, that was 97. We had a lot of um, a lot of press attention, a lot of media, but everything was very negative. From the gastronomic uh, area, they said this is not uh, cooking, this is not gastronomy. Of course, it is not. And from the the design area, um, uh, they w it was not designed enough. So you can see that we were uh, drinking beer. Uh, there while preparing the thing. So it was uh, a lot of negative critics, which for the second uh, time that we prepared it, we did it better. The exhibit was on the table, and then over the exhibit we were preparing these spams and doing it standing and much more elaborated. That's, that was the same year, 97. Other kind of performance with food, is this, um, I am working also as a designer, interior designer, and I did for Desigual a shop system in which um, um, the, the, the walls are a kind of zigzag, which are very good for uh, presenting graphics. And they wanted to do graphics with the catalog, but I didn't like much what they wanted to present. So what I said is tell them to give me the money they wanted to expend for these uh, vinyls for the graphic. With that money, um, I, I buy uh, good food and drinks. And uh, we did before, when the, the shop was finished, before the opening, the night before, I was preparing big parties with friends. Uh, we had very good uh, ham and very good drinks. People were painting the shop with uh, paint and mm, we were drinking and painting very much. They, the people were having a lot of fun. Next day, the shop was looking like that. So that means that through the food and the drinks, we were going uh, in, a, in a kind of 
uh, mood that people were doing very authentic uh, expression of his arts in the walls and in that way all the shops were completely different uh, with, and we did a, a lot of parties of that. This is a, another kind of performance. Uh, this is in Performa New York in 2009. They asked me to redesign a futuristic meal. Uh, Marinetti was doing big banquets, I think in Milano in 99. So I was supposed to redesign one of these banquets. And I was thinking that 100 years later, the value of a banquet was to communicate with the people or to to that people know each other better, like Marinetti did at that time, but in a much more, much more accelerated way, in a way also in a kind of uh, pro-futuristic way. So I did, I, I designed a ceramic glass, which they are energetic snacks attached with a neutral gum, and inside the glass there is a, a, a cocktail with alcohol, so that during um, the during the party, the the milling, uh, uh, around 80 people are in a closed room, and when they eat one of the snacks, there is something to do. So there is something like you present somebody to a friend, or a friend to another person, or you do something unexpected. In that way, um, these 80 people in about 20 minutes, they they come close together very much, so they are, in 20 minutes, close friends. It's in, in a way, it's a kind of Facebook in a real time. And here you see in New York performing this uh, uh, milling. That's an, another kind of uh, a performance. It's a gallery in Utrecht uh, who they asked me to redesign the opening on, on the next exhibit. And uh, I was thinking it's good in the opening to have some drink, to drink some alcoholic beverage because people are more open to uh, meet other people. But the problem is always you have to have this glass in the hand. So I was thinking to, to produce a fog of uh, gin and tonic. That's why it's called um, gin and tonic fog, and this is a machine which is uh, used for agriculture uh, that um, takes any liquid and with uh, ultrasounds break the molecules and put it in the air. So it was this fog of gin and tonic, you could go inside, breathe and drink gin and tonic without any glass, anything. and. Um, Uh, another relevant topic is interaction. Uh, in some way, I like very much when the objects interact uh, with the person or the, the objects that uh, um, they, they tell how to use it. So this is, for example, a cookie, which the decoration shows you how to eat it. And that way is this, uh, this idea of decoration that becomes information or information that becomes decoration. Or oh, this is another kind of interaction. It's a lollipop with a seed, an orange, an orange seed inside, um, which promotes exporadical reforestation. So it works that you, you eat the lollipop, and then w when you finish, you have the seed in the mouth, then you split it, and then you can plant it, and five years later, you have an orange uh, tree. And again, in 2001, they asked me to do another time this performance uh, with uh, tomatoes. And uh, I didn't want to do it anymore because I am not a kind of performing. So what I did is this food karaoke, which is uh, a, a screen with a, a film that shows you how to use the tomato and how to, you, how to do with the, with the tools so that in about 30 seconds you can do one of these spammed or for you or for other people. This is from 2001. 
Um, most of this, so I am very fascinated from new typologies, so they are not design, it's not a design that it's based on a new shape, and uh, there's, a, there's the same typologies. Mostly they are new typologies. So for example, this is a seat safe. Um, it's a, 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 a safe that instead of collecting money, you collect seats. I am quite fascinated uh, of seeds because um, if you eat an apple at home and you throw the seeds away, you are really throwing away information of the of 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 the apple uh, tree. So in a way, the, all this information go to the garbage, and I th I think <laughs> all these seeds go to the garbage. And they are really information about, uh, it's about uh, genetic information on, on the things. So this is for Alessi, and uh, this is a, um, a safe uh, to collect the seeds so that in that way you can be rich in the future, at least information rich. This is a new, uh, also a new typology of a label. It's a, a wine label that you can take a piece away so the next day you can remember the wine you were drinking. This is from 2006, uh, just to, to tell you that it's 11 years ago. Eh? Also this, it's a, a tool to stamp uh, graphic elements or patterns um, for of the vinegar of Modena, uh, and in that way, instead of being just drops of vinegar, the vinegar becomes uh, uh, with a um, own entity or own identity. And these are the eye cakes. They are cakes which inside they are completely uh, not normal like every cake but outside they have in a, a graphic pie which in percentage shows you the um, ingredients that the pie has. In that way the pies are, are like uh, promoting transparency in the way they communicate. So they never lie, they just transparent. This is also a now a different uh, typology of uh, um, kitchen. That's a kitchen uh, which is called Met Meta Territorial Kitchen System. It's an open source kitchen, and it's about the idea that um, if the kitchen is different and we cook differently, we'll change the food, or it's the food that changed the kitchen. So I was thinking, if I do a kitchen which is not based in a American kitchen and the standard kitchen would be possible to change the way we eat. So this is um, the system that it's everyone can do new of these elements. So if you don't want to do something, you can not have one of the elements. So it can grow because people add new appliances or systems or it can be very minimal. Of course, if uh, you have new typology objects or design, you don't, you don't, uh, it's not intuitive, so you don't know how to use it. Um, and that's why I always was forced to create instructions or to do kind of uh, explanation of how this works. So uh, this is, for example, how you eat the spam. You have to eat in one time, that's why the tomato has to have a, a size that goes into your mouth because if no, the oil is going uh, out. Or well, this is also an instruction of how to go in an exhibit which I did in Berlin in 98 in which the food was on the walls and not in the center. So th the instruction says you go inside, you see the food on the walls. As you don't understand anything, you go for a drink and after that you are a little bit more relaxed, then you can take a piece of wall 
and then you can try it. And here you see two of the visitors of the exhibit trying these walls uh, in, the ex in the Berlin exhibit, which they were uh, silk printed with ink, uh, with uh, sea seaweed ink, uh, a squid ink, from, uh, with uh, pictures of the spam and technotapas. Another kind of instruction in, in is this. This is, uh, it's called tonic di diet death, a tonic death diet. And this is a diet uh, if you don't want to eat traditional food, if you want to be a lot of time in uh, virtual spaces, if everything is contaminated, or if you want to travel in the space. It's based in mineral pills, carbohydrate, uh, carbohydrates, a chewing gum, and six uh, latex balls, and it works like uh, you have a, an, an app that makes you, um, uh, hypno through hypnosis, it, it makes you an induced coma, and you are in coma, but you are with the hands and the head uh, free, and in that way you can stay for long periods of time uh, without moving and eating this diet. Every 160 for hours you take the mineral pills, every 24 hours you dissolve the carbohydrates in two liters of water, uh, then you have to um, have the chewing gum to avoid the teeth falling, falling down, and then for the, for the guts you have these latex balls that you have to eat and then you, you go to the toilet and you take away and then you eat again after cleaning. In that way, you can really avoid gastronomy um, through this diet. Okay, and f for a few years, I've realized that, which is quite interesting, if I design the food, the, I, I just, I said, okay, I want, I think, food is an object, so I designed this object, this edible object, and then it happens that because this is completely new as a, as a um, typology, I have to explain how to use this object, but not only that, I have to build the environment from this uh, edible object, and also the context. So what happens is that after for a while, I, I realize I have a kind of business models uh, around the idea of uh, food. So this is, for example, at, at the left you have a, a microscopical picture of uh, dust, the dust that we have everywhere. Uh, we don't see it with, uh, with our eyes, but it's on the air. And what I did is I designed it a kind of uh, macromolecular muesli that could be in the air. Um, it's uh, based in nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. And the problem is that if you have dust in the air and you breath it, it goes to the lungs. So what I thought is I put in the air also a, a particle which is a saliva activator. In that way, it when you are in this dust, you you breathe it and it activates your saliva. So the, the dust sticks in the saliva and in that way it goes to the stomach and not to the lungs. So in that way, the, the nutrients, they go to the stomach and then you can uh, really um, use it. So it's called, uh, that was called Pharma Food. It's from 99 and that was the context you have here pictures of food, and here the machine that put di this dust in the air, and here you have a tape warning that you are in a high uh, nutrient air zone. Another kind of uh, business model is this, it's called food facility, and that's a commission from Mediamatic, it's a new media company in Amsterdam who asked me in uh, Wait, wait a minute, in, in 2005 asked me to put together 
new media and food. At that time, in 2005, it was getting very popular, Google. So, and um, if you think in Google, Google is a company who organizes content, but it doesn't produce the content. So, Food Facility was a restaurant that if you go there, they give you uh, a menu of 12 different restaurants, a Mexican, Spanish, Indian, Italian, and but these restaurants are takeaway restaurants. So the, the waiter was asking you, what do you want? And you say, I want a sushi. And then the waiter was calling to the takeaway restaurants from the city of Amsterdam and the scooter boys were coming to the center with the food and the food DJ was delivering the food into the tables. In that way, we were outsourcing from the restaurant everything which is bad, which is you, have, you need rooms for the food and then you need the kitchen and also you need the chefs. Everything was outsourced and we were only um, working or uh, working with the service of taking food from outside and also with the idea of serving the drinks while the people were waiting. So here you see the scooter boys that are taking the food and the food DJ was organizing this food to the different tables. And here you see that that was in 2005 in Amsterdam with, we get a lot of media attention. Also we were in the New York Times. Of course, nowadays it's very, it's much more popular through these services with the apps, with the, uh, other companies which they do that similar. This is again another kind of uh, business model. It's a candy restaurant done for uh, Tokyo in which they serve a menu of candies. So that was a kind of uh, a dish with uh, different candies from the market. They were put it into a sequence and then there were uh, the candy chefs preparing these menus and serving it. This was more uh, for a cross-media action uh, for communication. Again, another uh, kind of business model is this uh, restaurant which started Camper uh, in 2003 called Football, which was serving uh, rice balls, uh, completely organic and natural, and where the interior of the restaurant was uh, done through some benches that you eat informally and um, then the food was uh, this kind of uh, uh, rice balls. That was uh, a, an experiment that Camper did uh, in Barcelona and then in Berlin, but then they finished. Also another kind of business model is this solar kitchen restaurant. Um, uh, this is a restaurant based in cooking with uh, solar kitchens, uh, with the sun. So you have uh, these um, different kitchens here and uh, it's, if there is no sun, the restaurant is closed. That's in Helsinki and to, to, uh, to do the restaurant, we just painted a surface in white in the floor and uh, we, we put our, the name of Anto Melasniami, the chef who was cooking, and my name and that's the, the date and then the, the name of the restaurant and the opening days. And then um, in, interesting is two things. One thing is that uh, I got an architecture prize because they say that's the minimum the minimal thing you can do to build something, which is to paint the surface in white. And the second th interesting thing is that the Finnish people, uh, also when it was in open air, when they were smoking, they were going out of the white space. And here you can see the, the area. This is an area from the harbor of Helsinki. That was 2011. For the same 
uh, uh, chef, Anto Melasniami, I did this uh, bar. Uh, he had this restaurant in which uh, they do normal kitchen and he asked me to design a gin tonic bar. So what I did is a box that when you close looks like a transportation box, but when you open it's like a, a bar, I call it Trojan bar, and it's a kind of gin tonic bar. And this is also, uh, again, a kind of business model. It consists, it's called uh, a thick bar, public fountain ice cube bar. It consists in uh, that uh, it, you go to the city in a fountain and you hijack the fountain by putting an ice cube machine on it. So when you have the fountain full of ice, you can put uh, champagne and then you have a champagne bar till police comes. Uh, that's, a, of course, it's a model presented in, uh, in La Fondazione Sandretto from Torino. And now I will explain you about a project that I am uh, doing in Barcelona, nearby the studio. And uh, I had the possibility to have a space and I decided to do a project uh, with the context of a bar and it's called uh, Lex Designer Project Bar, and it's a bar in which um, we, we are building it with 3D printers. So we are printing the whole bar. The bar is open f from the first day, and it's in, in process of printing. That, that's how it will be at the end. We still didn't finish it, um, but it has to look like that. This is the first day, that's, uh, an, uh, th that was in November uh, 2015. We had only this piece of the bar and then some glasses also printed with a 3D printer machine. Here you can see the 3D printers. Uh, that's originally how it was, so it's empty, but it's, it's open from the first day. At the beginning, we didn't have glasses or very few. We didn't have any uh, stools. Uh, slowly, we go, we, we are having more things. Now, it's more or less like that, so we have some stools to sit and we have the whole bar already done. We are uh, continuously doing it. That's more or less the actual status. It's every day open from 6 to 11, 6 uh, uh, p.m. to 11 p.m. And the idea is to print the bar, um, uh, to do the whole bar, and then one finish then we will transform the 3D printing machines to print food, to print the snacks of the bar. We, we take uh, documentation of every of these uh, uh, steps. Every day we do documentation. We also print the letters of, of, the, of the glass. So we are trying to see how this technology of printing is uh, working to print a, a, a space. And, and that's the thing that um, uh, we want to print food afterwards. So when I started to do the bar in 2015, I was thinking that in 2017, uh, I would have the bar printed and I will start with the food. What happens is that 2017, when it was 20 years of my first exhibit, I still didn't have the bar ready. So, but still we, I worked for this exhibit to print one of these tomatoes, the spammed. So we did the project uh, to try to print one tomato, one spammed, which is the tomato with a bread, oil and salt for my 20 years exhibit in February this year so that it happens. Eh? So finally we had the machine ready and that was this, um, this uh, first um, printed 
spammed, which was uh, not really succeeding. One, one spam took at least three hours to print. So while in three hours, in 97, we did 500 of these. Um, it was really very complicated, the project, and that was the exhibit. But it was, in a way, linked to the process of design. So I did a diagram with an anthropologist, Octavio Rofes, and this, the spam factor in 97 was related to design which is about luxury, the spam karaoke 2000 about um, assistential design, design which is about care, and 2017, the 3D spam was about survival. Interesting is to think what can be 2027 and 2037, which is synthetic, digital spam and life spam. So that's the it's this year, in February, the digital spam. This, it's really, with 3D printing machines, you can do very easily chocolate and sugar because the technology is very easy to produce that. But this is a completely different technology. It's based in uh, wheat. So the process is completely different. This is what it will happen in 2027, synthetic digital spam. The 3D printing technology allows you to separate uh, the whole thing, so the nutrients, vitamins, minerals, everything can be exactly calculated and you have uh, something neutral, which is built in architectural structure, and then you add all the things. So this is something that in a way could be the future of food which is a very uh, different concept of what it's now gastronomy. And this is what I was thinking it's for 2037. So a spam is not a product of uh, uh, the, the project of design, but it's a product of the nature. That's a tomato plant uh, with uh, steam cells of wheat so that finally the plant, sorry, the plant, it tastes like the bread with tomato. And just two final projects. Just uh, this is uh, a project I did in Mantova for Mantova Playground, which is f for children and uh, it was the idea to play with food or to work with food, but without cooking. And so they were stamping uh, food on a kind of big uh, table and playing with composition of uh, plates. And this is uh, something that will happen in this month, at, at the end of this month, in. Kunzungewerbe Hamburg. If you are in Hamburg, 18 uh, this month, I am presenting the idea of digital food, this food which is built through architectonical uh, um, process, which the texture and everything ca can be done with uh, projecting the interior of these snacks, and then the, the tastes and the nutrients and everything as is added as something very precise and it's called digital food and will be opening this 18 uh, of this month in uh, Hamburg. Okay, thank you. Grazie, grazie Martì. Eh, avete c'è qualche domanda in sala, insomma, qualcuna, un, un discorso molto stimolante, insomma, quindi se qualcuno volesse fare una domanda o allora faccio io una domanda a, a Martì. Eh, lui parla anche bene italiano, gli abbiamo chiesto di fare gentilmente lo speech in inglese perché 
magari era più semplice eh, anche per lui eh, esprimere tutti i concetti che ha raccontato. Eh, come, come immagini il cibo del futuro? Da un lato sembra che sia sempre più come dire, costituito da elementi separati e divisi, mentre il, tuo elemento, mentre il cibo è raccontato a te come un elemento di convivialità, un modo per stare insieme. Quindi la produzione sembra ottimizzare i processi, mentre le relazioni tra le persone eh, dovrebbero, insomma, il cibo dovrebbe favorire questa convivialità. Come, come vedi questo rapporto? Um, in italiano? Se vuoi, sì. Cioè, il fatto è che questa convivialità è sempre basata su un, un tavolo e un, dei piatti. Allora io penso che um, il fatto di... Um, questa idea del tavolo e del piatto è un po' antico. Allora penso che si deve ridisegnare una nuova convivialità più adatta ai tempi che abbiamo. E tu... Il tuo rapporto con la scienza invece? Uh, mi interessa molto come, um, che indirizzi prendono la scienza, la tecnologia e anche affetta molto la forma come uh, noi um, uh, 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 viviamo il giorno a giorno. Cioè, um, Infatti la tecnologia ha fatto possibile le spam perché ha, ha, ha messo nuove uh, forme di stile di vita, che è questo di mangiare in fronte a un computer. Negli anni 60 non era possibile perché non c'erano i computer. Adesso uh, uh, è, è più normale. Cioè il fatto è che... Uh, la tecnologia ha fatto evoluzionare tanto uh, la vita quotidiana, cioè adesso i telefoni mobili fa che tutti possano parlare ovunque, però il cibo rimane sempre indietro e questo è quello che non ho capito. Cioè non vuole dire che il cibo deve essere peggio, sino meglio con l'aiuto di tutto quello che abbiamo con noi e soprattutto con l'aiuto della informazione che è possibile dappertutto. C'è qualcuno che vuole fare qualche domanda? Un'ultima cosa ti chiedo, hai lavorato ehm, con cibo eh, solido allo stato gassoso? Hai mai lavorato o vorresti lavorare, hai qualche idea per lavorare anche con dei liquidi o dal vino all'acqua? Um, no. Quelli, questi nuovi cibi che sono basati su strutture architettoniche all'interno, che vengono, cioè la testura, la tessitura, e tutto questo si fa attraverso queste costruzioni uh, che, che sono possibili attraverso la, la stampante 3D. Um, questo fa anche possibile avere delle camere dove ci sono diverse tipologie di alimenti, di sostanze, possono essere gassose, possono essere fermentati, anche liquidi, cioè le possibilità sono completamente aperte e tu potresti avere in un piccolo snack uh, tutto un mondo di diversi stati che ti prendi un attimo cose che di solito adesso non si può. Va bene. Ringraziamo Martì per questa... Okay, grazie. Thank you.